All right, Shalom. Before I begin, I want to give all praise, power, and glory and thanks to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Kakadash. Double honors to the elders, the prophets, the apostles, the wise men, our forefathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Salutations to, salutations to the hopeful elect that are here personally true to the four corners of the earth. To them, I say Shalom. So today's lesson is going to be about, um, it's branching on to the last video that me and Brother Pierce talked about the other day. And before I begin, I'm just going to go over a few things. I'm going to talk about parables and, you know, how to read precepts. And at the end, I'm going to give a riddle. But I'm also going to give many, many uh, scriptures to tack on to what I'm talking about. And the last video that we talked about was how Yahweh Shai was not born of a virgin. And so in this video, I'm going to talk about how, you know, I'm talking about this part about how he's the son of David or a.k.a. Solomon. So before I begin, um, I want to start off with talking about parables, which I'm going to start on Mark chapter 4, verses 11 through 13. And it says, And he said unto them, Unto you it is given to know the mystery of the kingdom of Yahweh, but unto them that are without all these things are done in parables, that seeing they may see and not perceive, and hearing they may hear and not understand, lest at any time they should be converted, and their sins should be forget for given them 13 and he said unto them know ye not this parable how then will you know all parables so what he's telling you about um 11 and 12 he's he was talking to his disciples and telling them you know um it's been prophesied that I have you know that i was going to speak in parables and this is what i'm i am going to do so 12 he's saying you know yes People can read the Bible and read things, but they can't see the secrets because only the secrets are meant for the elect of Israel. Same thing as hearing it and understanding it. Like we can go out there and teach, like I said, we can go out there and teach this lesson and give parables. But if they don't have the understanding or are chosen or converted to understand these things, then they're not going to understand it. So I'm going to jump to Isaiah 28 and 10. <clears throat> Isaiah 28 and 10 For precept must be upon precept Precept upon precept Line upon line Line upon line Here a little and there a little So that's how you read precepts You know, it's not about rushing To see how many chapters you can read in a day Or this and that You know, you gotta take it line upon line The book is like a crossword puzzle You know what I'm saying You have a line You try to match it with another line And if you can get like two or more Then you're on the right path You know but if it's if you can't make connections and you're just speaking from what you think, you know, like it says, um, I can't remember the verse, but it says, lean not on your own understanding. You know what I'm saying? So he's telling you how to read it. <clears throat> so the riddle that I'm going to read is in Matthew 22, verses 41 through 45. So it says, while the Pharisees were gathered together, Yahweh asked them, saying, What think ye of Hamashiach? Whose son is he? They say unto him, The son of David. He said unto them, How then doth David in spirit call him Lord, saying, The Lord said unto my Lord, Sit thou on my right hand till I make thine enemies thy footstool. If David then call him Lord, how is he his son? So I'm going to start from the beginning for people to understand that. All right, so I'm going to start from the basics. So I'm going to go to Numbers. I'm going to read Numbers 1, chapter 1, verse 18. Here we go. And this one, this scripture that I'm reading, Numbers 1 and 18, is talking about, you know, patriarch. All right. And they assembled all the congregation together on the first day of the second month. And they declared their pedigrees after their families by the house of their fathers, according to the number of the names, from 20 years old and upwards by their poles. So key word is their pedigrees after their families by the house of their fathers. So basically, you're called by your father. To put it in simple terms, think about it. So who holds the seed? Now, who carries the seed? Well, the man does. You know what I'm saying? The man is the one who carries the nations in his, you know, in his sack. When it's embedded into the woman, is you know, he's getting help from the woman. 
You know what I'm saying? That's also is what creates marriage is sex. So with they're becoming one flesh at the same time, they're also procreating, which is spreading the nations. But what he's doing is, like I said before, you're called by your father. <clears throat> so with that one, like that's why we say, you know, uh, like Daniel says, you know, the confusion of faces. We're not called, you know, black Hebrews. We come in different shades. That's one thing. But we also are among many nations like a speckled bird. So, you you know, you can be a part of, you know, an Ammonite. You know what I'm saying? You might have the the, vi the visage of an Ammonite, but you can be an Israelite. So it's, it's all a spiritual thing. But also because Jake... And other tribes mixed amongst the heathen as they were put into captivity. So it's all about your spirit. It's not about what you look like. Because there's a lot of individuals out there that look like us or have our shade that are Edomites. Because, you know, back in slavery time, when, you know, our women laid with the slave masters or were raped, you know, by the slave masters, then... You know, that's what created children and the whole time, you know, it's an Edomite. So you don't go based off color, you go based off the spirit. So the next one I'm gonna jump to is John. All right, I'm gonna go to John and I'm gonna read chapter seven. I'm gonna read verses, just verse 42. And this is when, this one is talking about how, you know, the Hamashiach cometh of the seed of David. So 42. Have not the scripture said that Hamashiach cometh of the seed of David and out of the town of Bethlehem where David was? So that right there is it's also telling you, you know, he's the son of David. Right? So if he's the son of David, you know, the scripture is, is completely telling you that. So <clears throat> to get more info on that one. You know, I'm going to start at Matthew, you know, Matthew 1 and 1. If you read through Matthew 1, 1 and 1 clearly and slowly, then you will understand, you know, the genealogy of Hamashiach, you know, from Abraham to Joseph. So chapter so chapter 1, verse 1, the book of generation of Yahweh Hamashiach, the son of David, the son of Abraham. And if you read line 2, it says Abraham begat Isaac and Isaac begat Jacob and Jacob begat Judas and his brethren. Right. So we jump down. We're going to come back to the son of Abraham. So let's jump down to six. So it says, and Jesse beget David, the king and David, the king beget Solomon of her that had been the wife of Uriah. Like I said in previous videos, David had about 20 kids or so. A few of them are, you know, named in the book, you know, but they didn't do they didn't have major impact like Solomon. You know what I'm saying? Like I said in six. David, the king, begat Solomon. So if it says he's the son of David, the only way he can be the son of David is if he comes from his loins. A lot of people think, oh, you know, we're all from the son of, we you know, we're from the house of David. That's not true. You know what I'm saying? In order for you to be actually a son of somebody, you have to come from the same, you know, you have to come from his loins. So right now we're going to focus on how he's the son of of David, all right. So to further more that one, I'm gonna jump to Ecclesiastes, so that people can understand. I'm sure a lot of people are still confused, like what, like, you know, how is he this? Because you gotta understand, David was in the, the Old Testament, you know, and the Hamashiach popped up in the New Testament. So how is he the son of David, if, you know, he's he popped up in the Old Testament. I mean, if he popped up in the New Testament. So I'm going to go to Ecclesiastes chapter 1. And I'm going to read verses 9 through 13. All right. So verse 9. The thing that hath been, it is that which shall be. And that which is done is that which shall be done. And there is no new thing under the sun. So what is he telling you? Well, there's nothing new. You know, everything that you see from nation to contraptions and things like that. None of this is new. All right. Is there anything whereof it may be said? See, this is new. It had been already of old time, which was before us, like it just mentioned. 11. There is no remembrance of former things. Neither shall there be any remembrance of things that are to come with those that shall come after. Well, why don't you remember anything? Well, not to take away from the lesson. If you read Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 13, it tells you 
why it's not important because a lot of a lot of things if you read through ecclesiastes a lot of things are vanity we only have one major thing to do on this earth as being the you know as the duty of man which you can read like i said in chapter 12 verse 13 so i'm back to chapter 12 i the preacher was king over israel in jerusalem so what is he telling you well i'm also reading through ecclesiastes you know what i'm saying so let's jump to uh same chapter chapter one verse one the words of the preacher the son of david king of jerusalem well, how is that possible? You know what I'm saying? Yes, we know about Ecclesiastes, but besides this chapter, you don't really hear much about him. So he's also telling you, you know, I'm the son of David, you know, king of Jerusalem. You know, I'm also, you know, he's also telling you he was the king of Israel. Well, when did it mention that in the Bible that he was, you know, that it talks about the king of him being king of Israel was well, letting you know, well, you know, he had to be Solomon because Solomon was the next one that did major, you know, major impact. And if you read through Ecclesiastes, you can see that, you know, it talks about wisdom. You know, it's a lot of wisdom and there's a lot of things that he talks about, just like um, go to verse 13. I gave my heart to seek and search out by wisdom Concerning all things that are done under heaven, this sore travail hath Yahweh given to the sons of man to be exercised therewith. So he searched about wisdom. You have to understand, uh, if you ever read the wisdom of Solomon, he talks about wisdom a lot of that too. Same thing with Proverbs. A lot of wisdom you will hear from Solomon, you know. <clears throat> so it's also telling you Ecclesiastes. Well, Hamashiach also had to be Ecclesiastes because you got to remember, you know, the son of David. Well, Solomon was David, all right? I mean, scratch that. Solomon is the son of David, right? Well, the Hamashiach was also Solomon. I was telling you, he, he was also Ecclesiastes. I just read to you 9, 10, and 11. There's no new thing under the sun, all right? If that doesn't help, let's go to chapter 4, verse 16. There's no end of all the people, even of all that have been before them. They also that come after shall not rejoice in them surely this also is vanity and vexation of spirit so right there is letting you know like i said my soul is not new your soul is not new um nobody is new none of the nations are new if you hear stuff like people like oh when was the last time you seen the ammonite or when was the last time you seen the edomite the only thing that's different is they changed the names and esau edom did that he changed the names because if everything was still point blank as what as it is in the bible then, you know, that the son of perdition would have been, you know, unraveled quickly, you know, and none of his schemes would have worked like it has in the past. But the Most High, you know, along with the men of Israel are revealing his secrets. And we're just doing it by the Bible. You know, you, you got to study. You can't look at the Bible as just like a book. You literally have to look through the etymology of the words because, yes, the Bible is written in Paleo Hebrew. So you have to be able to, you know, understand the translations. But also, you have to look through the history. That's how you connect the dots. Because there's a lot of things in the Bible that's been tampered with. Yes, it is about 27,000 errors or more. But when you have been converted and you know how to read it and to go around and you study the history, but outside of the book, then yes, you will be able to read it. I'm not saying that in a way for you to just you know, not believe in the Bible. I'm just letting you know, you know, give a heads up. There are errors in the book. And that's not by the way of the Most High, but that is the way of the heathen because the heathen wanted to implement their own things. All right, not to get off track. So we're going to jump to Matthew and I'm going to read 27, uh, chapter 27, verse 42. And it says, he saved others himself. He cannot save. If he be the king of Israel, let him now come down from the cross and we will believe him. So what he's telling you is, you know, this is when he was, you know, he was hanging um, <clears throat> when he was, you know, crucified. It says he, he'd be the king of Israel. Well, think about it. Who was also the king of Israel? Yes, you know, he, you know, David was the king of Israel. But who also was the king of Israel after Solomon? You see what I'm saying? Yes, the Hamashiach is the king of Israel. But you get, like, like I said, 
precept among precept. You, you got a match line. You see, we just read King of Israel, King of Israel. Yes, there were many King of Israel, but a lot of them did evil in the sight of the Lord, right? But like I said, it's only a few that made major impact in, you know, in the word. And it was either David or Solomon, you know, pertaining to, you know, the pertaining in the seed of David. All right. So don't get confused. Yes, there are many kings, you know, but you got to stay inside, you know, the seed of David. Right. So the king of Israel. So I'm going to jump to Mark. All right. I'm going to jump to Mark and I'm going to read chapter 15 and I'm going to read verse 32. So 15 verse 32 let Hamashiach, the king of Israel, descend now from the cross that we may see and believe. And they that were crucified with him reviled him. So like I said, it said again, he's the king of Israel. All right. So let's go to John. We're going to jump to John chapter one. We're going to jump to John chapter one. And we're going to read verse 49. All right. Nathaniel answered and saith unto him, Rabbi, thou art the son of Yahweh, thou art the king of Israel. Like again, he's giving you more, you know, yes, he's he you know he's the king of kings. He's also the king of Israel. Like I said before, he's also telling you, you know, he's the king of Israel. Now, if that doesn't help, I will jump to Hebrews. All right. I'm gonna jump to Hebrews chapter seven. Because people can't deny it. You know, you, you ask a lot of people, you know, you know, the Messiah slash the Hamashiach. You know, you, you're like, yes, I believe in him. Okay. Well, if you tell them, okay, are you aware that, you know, this is not his first time he's been here. People just, like, Ugh. you know, scoffing and things like that because they don't read or they cannot see the parables. All right. So, chapter uh, Hebrews chapter 7, verse 27. Who needeth not daily as those high priests to offer up sacrifice. So what he's saying is, you know, yes, the priests were imperfect. You know what I'm saying? They had to be close to perfect, though, because they were the high priests. But, you know, as man, man makes errors. Um, <clears throat> but, you know, they also gave sacrifice for other individuals for their sins and other things as that. You know, there's many types of sacrifices that you had to give up. Um, so... A lot of people are like, oh, no, bro. But the next line, you know, after the comma, it says, first for his own sins and then for the people's. For this he did once when he offered up himself. So a lot of people, if they ring too fast, they're like, see, this is what I'm, this is what it's saying. It's saying it's he didn't sin. Well, that don't make sense. If he didn't sin, they would have never put it in the Bible. That, never, that don't even make sense. If I didn't do anything, why would I put it? That's just like, okay, you know. Um, Jeff is an Edomite. Therefore, he is not, you know, an Ammonite. Well, obviously we know that if we just told you he was an Edomite. And like I said before, there's no such thing as you can't mix nations. You know, you can mix nations, you know what I'm saying? But you cannot be mixed. You can't be so-called Irish and white at the same time. It doesn't work like that. You're either one nation or you're another. We might have mixed and mingled and your complexion might be different or your visage may be different. But, you, you know, nation goes by your bloodline. So that's what 27 is saying. So he's saying first for his own sins and then for the people's. Well, if he was a walking Bible, like, you know, he was filled with the Holy Spirit. If he was a walking Bible, he didn't sin. And if people did, said he didn't, you know, he didn't sin as the Hamashiach. That is correct. So if it says first for his own sins, then he had to have been here before. Like I said, there's nothing new under the sun. That's what he told you. <clears throat> he told you in 4 and 16, there's no end of the people as well. So if he says that, then, you know, how are you being confused? If you're saying, oh, you know, he made, you know, he did sin and he was doing this and that. Well, now you're saying that, you know, the Holy Spirit, you know, now you're blaspheming the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit is perfect. You know, you use the law to receive the Holy Spirit to be perfect. 
Second uh, Timothy um, chapter three, verse seven, ever learning and never being never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. So a lot of people are learning these things. You know what I'm saying? They're learning this and that, whatever the pastor is teaching or whatever they hear in that Christianity. And they're not being able to understand the truth because they're getting further away from it. They're, the most high tells you, you know, how you have to come to him in spirit and truth. Well, religion is the opposite. Religion is telling you to combine, you know, like basically get locked down in a box. So they're not connecting with their spirit. You know what I'm saying? Yes, they may use the word spirit and things like that, but they're not like, they're not, you you know, connecting with their spirit. They're connecting mostly with what um, their 501c3 is telling them or, you know, with these lies that they're hearing. Just like um, Second Timothy chapter 4, 4, verse 4, and they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned into fables. So a lot of people are believing these lies and things like that, and it's not helping them because you're not doing anything but cutting yourself deeper. And what do I mean by that? Okay, well, let's jump to Proverbs chapter 28, verse 9. <clears throat> Before I get to that, you know, a lot of people just say, oh, the law is done away with and things like that. Well, is that true? No, because think about it. Look at um, Paul told you, you know, what I'm saying Romans 7 and 1. No, you're not, brethren, for I speak to them that know the law, how that the law have dominion over a man as long as he lived. Right. So in the last video uh, that you'll see on our YouTube page, we talked about how he was conceived under the law. So everything that the the Hamashiach did from his birth all the way to his death, it was through scripture and it was through the laws. So everything he did was correct, right? So Proverbs 28 and 9, he that turneth away his ear from hearing the law, even his prayer shall be an abomination. So when we're out here pushing the truth, teaching them the laws, statutes, and the holy days, they scoff. If they pastor and teach them that, they don't want to hear it. They, oh, the law is done away with this and that. And that's not what's helping them. So he, he's giving you the truth. You know what I'm saying? He's revealing it to his prophets. And I got to remember the um, scripture, but I'll probably drop it down in the uh, description box. Come to think of it. Let me see. It might be, let me go to Amos. And it might be chapter three. Or, let's see. Yeah, it might be chapter three, verse seven. Yes, chapter three, verse seven. Amos, surely... The Lord Yahweh would do nothing but reveal his secrets unto his servants, the prophets. So what is he doing? Well, in order for you to read precepts and understand it, he has to reveal it to you. You have to be converted to it. You have to be chosen. You have to be a part of the elect, right? <clears throat> so that's how you explain he's the son of, you know, he's the son of David because he's also Solomon. Because you got to understand, like I said, Hebrews 7 and 27. He sinned as Solomon. Yes, he was other people, but I want you to focus on Solomon right now, how he was Solomon. Solomon sinned when he, you know, he had all those many wives and they wanted to worship other things. And he created all these altars and things. But he's, he also created um, alchemy, which is what, like I said before in the last video, you know, what the Freemasons um, follow and the Illuminati and all those secret societies follow after Solomon. They get that from Solomon. All right. Now to explain how he's, uh, you know, he's the son of Abraham. Well, to begin with, all right, Abraham had many sons, right? He gave birth to Ishmael, you know, he begat Ishmael as well. The Ishmaelites are the Moors, the so-called Moors. So we're not, that right there is telling you we're not from you know, we're not the Ishmaelites. We're, we're not the Moors, all right? The Moors also created Hinduism and Islam and all things like, you know, and, you know, Muslims. And, you you know, you got people that, you know, our own people, they're Israelites. You know, there's, you know, they're like, oh, you know, I'm a Muslim and things like that. Well, why? You know, the Ishmaelites didn't like us either. A lot of people are hate us because we were chosen. Like I said, there are 18 families, all right? There are 18 bloodlines, and they don't like us because out of all those 18 nations, he chose us. You know what I'm saying? Like, uh, I can go back to Amos again. All right. And I can read verses 3. I can read chapter 3. You know, go back to chapter 3. And you can read the first two. 
You know what I'm saying? So um, Amos 3, 3 and 1, For behold, in those days and that time when I shall bring again the captivity of Judah and Jerusalem. Right? Oh, slock it. I'm in joy. Slock it. Amos 3 and 1 and 2. Hear, hear this word that Yahweh has spoken against you, O children of Israel, against the whole family which I brought up from the land of Egypt, saying, You only have I known of all the families of the earth. Therefore, I will punish you for all your iniquities. Can two walk together except they be agreed? So what he's telling you there is, <clears throat> all children of Israel, he's talking about Jacob. You got to remember, Jacob had his name changed to Israel, which you can read in Genesis 32 and 25, if I am correct. Yeah, he, Israel, you know, you know, had his name changed from Jacob <clears throat> when he wrestled with the Most High. So when he brought up from the land of Egypt, well, who led them out of the land of Egypt? Moses, right? So if you read Exodus 2 and 2, Moses is from the tribe of Levi. Like he said, like I said, he's the Levitical, he's a Levitical priest. Most of, most, if not all of the priests are Levites. All right. So Moses led them out of there. You know what I'm saying? He was a part of the, he's a part of the 12 tribes. They're they not going to tell you that though, just because he was raised up by Pharaoh. That doesn't mean anything, but Moses is from the tribe of Levi, all right? Two, like I said, of all the families of the earth, therefore I will I punish you for all your iniquities. I'm going to add a picture to this video that gives you the list of the 18 nations. I'm also going to give you um, another picture where it gives you the sons of Noah, you know, Shem, Ham, and Japheth, and it's going to give them and all the nations that derive under their bloodlines as well. So that's what he's saying. He chose you. He The blessings were for the Israelites, right? So I'm going to go to Romans. I'm going to read through 9. I am going to read through, um, so I'm going to read chapter 9, 4 through 8, all right? Now, who are Israelites to whom pertain of the adoption and the glory and the covenants and the giving of the law and the service of Yahweh and the promises, Right? So he's telling he's telling you who well who the Jews that Paul was going to teach you know you read it in Galatians it says first Jew you know then Greek well they're all Israelites all right so five who are the fathers and of whom are as concerning the flesh of Hamashiach came who was over all Yahweh uh, Yahweh blessed forever all men still talking about the Israelites this whole chapter is Paul's concern for the Jews aka the Israelites all right six. Not as though the word of Yahweh hath taken none effect, for they are not all Israel which are of Israel. So what he's talking about, he's talking about the two-thirds and the one-third. So the two-thirds are not all Israel, all right? Because the two-thirds, they're not following the law, statutes of the holy days. The one-third is this is the remnant that he's going to save, which you can read in Zechariah. Um, it should be, um, I'm going to read it after this one. So, seven, neither because they are the seed of Abraham are they all children, but in Isaac shall thy seed be called. So, all right, so we got Abraham. Abraham begat Isaac. Isaac begat Jacob. All right. So, pertaining to the Hamashiach, it says, neither because they are the seed of Abraham are they all children, but in Isaac shall thy seed be called. All right. We're going to come back to seven. Let me read eight. That is... They which are the children of the flesh, these are not the children of Yahweh, but the children of the promise are counted for the seed. So, <clears throat> seven, pertaining to the Hamashiach, like I just said. So you go Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, right? Well, if you read Matthew, you know, the first chapter, verse one and two, he says he's the son of Abraham. Okay, so how does he implement into this? Well, Isaac... Basically, he is the son of Isaac, all right? Well, I'm sorry, scratch that. The Hamashiach is Isaac, all right? He is Isaac because the promise is, is called through him, right? So technically, Isaac beget Jacob, all right? Jacob beget, you know, the 12 tribes, now, to understand that, I'm not going to go deep into it. I'll probably make a different video on that. <clears throat> you also have to understand the Hamashiach is also, he tells you, he's the root 
and the offspring of David, right? So the root, where does David come from? Well, you got to go all the way back. He's, he said he's the bright and morning star. So the Hamashiach is also Adam, all right, for people who don't understand that. And like I said, I will make a different video on that for people to understand that part too. But he's also Adam, okay? Now, <clears throat> that's getting off topic. So Isaac is also the Hamashiach because he's the son of Abraham. Well, how can he, be, like I said before, how can he be the son of Abraham if Abraham was in the Old Testament and the Hamashiach popped up in the New Testament? He has to literally come from his loins. You can't go um, your granddad and then your dad and then the son, you know, that the son is the granddad. No, it don't work like that. He came from the loins of Abraham. Well, how can that be possible? Well, he has to be Isaac. Do you see what I'm saying? So Isaac gave birth to Jacob, like I said, Israel. Jacob gave birth birth to the 12 nations and that's how you put that one together and i could give more verses and scripture to understand to you know go deep into it but that's going to be confusing because that's the parts people don't understand but i just want you to understand that part you know so when you're reading through precepts and things like that slow down make sure you can back up the evidence because there's a lot of secrets in this book all right it's a lot of secrets just like um, how people are not understanding that Paul talked to only the Israelites, all right? Well, now you got to understand, <clears throat> just to touch in something real quick, Romans 11 and 1. This is what Paul said. I say then, hath Yahweh cast away his people? Yahweh forbid. For I also am an Israelite of the seed of Abraham of the tribe of Benjamin. Right? So how is he the seed of Abraham? So he, he comes from Jacob, like he said, of the tribe of Benjamin. Benjamin is one of the 12 sons of Jacob, all right? So he's, he's, from the 12, <clears throat> he's from the 12 tribes. So Paul was speaking to the Israelites. You got to remember that. Paul wasn't speaking to the Greeks or things like that. I just told you in Romans 9 and 4, right? Who are Israelites to whom pertain of the adoption and the glory and the covenants and the giving of the law and the services of Yahweh and the promises. You have to be from the twelve, from the tribe, from the twelve tribes of Israel. You have to be of the children of Israel. It's a bloodline, like I told you. It goes from Abraham to Isaac to Jacob. Yes, Abraham gave birth to many other nations, you know, just like the Ishmaelites, like I said. But like I, like it says in seven, through Isaac shall thy seed be called. Who he's talking about? He's talking about Jacob. And he's not talking to all of Israel. He's talking to the one third. So that's how you break down scripture. You got you to gotta connect it with other things in the book. Precept upon precept, line upon line, here a little, there a little. Hopefully this lesson was edifying. You have any questions, I'll drop my, uh, my Instagram as well as Brother Paris will drop his Instagram as well. <clears throat> Before I leave, you know, I want to give all praises, power and glory and thanks to Yahweh, Bahashim Yahweh Shai, Bahashim Kadash. Devil honors to the elders, the prophets, the apostles, the wise men, and our forefathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Salutations to the hopeful elect that are out there pushing the truth to the four corners of the earth. To them I say, Shalom, Kwam Yasharala, and the Baba Baal. Shalom.